Good morning, this is Pastor Serrano from Valley Baptist Church. Today is June the 28th. I'd like to welcome you to our services this morning. Uh, we're a small church in El Paso, Texas. We've been here almost 15 years, and uh, we're grateful that you can join us this morning. If this is your first time joining us, remember, if you'd like to subscribe, push the red button. If you'd like to be reminded when the videos come out, uh, press the little bell, and uh, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, and uh, leave us a note if you like. Welcome all your comments. And so we're going to get started with uh, singing Victory in Jesus. You all know the song, so sing along with us. <laughs> chapter 11 beginning in verse number one the Bible says in John chapter 11 verse 1 now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany the town of Mary and her sister Martha it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick therefore his sister sent unto him saying Lord Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that he said, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. 
Then after that, said he to his disciples, let us go unto Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews have laid sought to stone thee, and go is thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of, this, out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them, plainly, Lazarus is dead. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for uh, the privilege to again carry your word through the airwaves of the different platforms. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your word will go forth as you commanded to go and achieve that which you wanted to achieve in the ears and hearts of those that receive it. I pray, Heavenly Father, for that person that has never had a relationship with you, that person, or God, that does not know you, that person that has never heard of you, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would draw that person to yourself. This might be the day when they receive salvation. Thank you, Lord God, for uh, this passage of Scripture. Holy Spirit of God, teach us and guide us so that we learn what you want us to learn, Lord God. And I pray that it would be a blessing to those that hear it and an encouragement to all the believers. We thank you for what you're going to do. We ask it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus' victory over death is the name of the message. Jesus' victory over death. You know, the pyramids in Egypt and the cemeteries in London and Washington, D.C., and the tomb of Jesus Christ are as different as night and day. The cemeteries are famous for what they contain, but the tomb of Jesus is famous for what it does not contain. You see, Jesus is alive. Jesus is the answer to man's death. He is the resurrection in the life. Jesus is the answer to man's death. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief, speaking about Satan, he said, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. That is the plan of Satan. That's all he does. Kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus comes for a different reason. He says, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus is the answer to man's death. Every one of us have an appointment with death. Every one of us, if the Lord tarries uh, and delays is coming, every one of us will close our eyes on this earth and will enter into eternity. Do you know where you are going to spend eternity? The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, and as it, appointed, as it is appointed unto man once to die. But, but, and after this, the judgment. Every one of us have an appointment with death. Everyone has an appointment with death. To this appointment, no one is late. You can be late to your doctor's appointments, you can be late to the mechanics appointment. You can be late to the, you can be uh, late to the beauty shop appointments. But to this appointment, no one is late. Everyone is on time. But the Bible says, and after this, the judgments. So death is not the end of all. You're going to have to be going before a judge after you die. Everyone is going to be judged. Believers are going to be judged for what they did with their lives after they were saved. And unbelievers, those that rejected Jesus Christ, are going to be judged for rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of us is an appointment with death. The Bible tells us the reason death came into the world in the book of Genesis, chapter uh, number uh, 2. In the book of Genesis, chapter number 2, God gave... Adam a command God gave Adam a command in, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 God told Adam 
verse 16 of Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God commanded the man. Notice, he commanded the man. He did not command the woman. The Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God said, when you eat of that tree, you are going to die. The Bible tells us that death came into the world because of sin. Adam disobeyed that command of God. And disobedience is sin. And the penalty for sin is death. That's why death started coming into the world. In the book of Romans, chapter 5, in the book of Romans, chapter 5, in verse number 12, the Bible says, Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world? That's Adam. He disobeyed God. That's why sin entered into the world. Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin? So death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Because Adam's disobedience to God, sin was allowed to come into the world. And sin passed up on, upon all men, and sin brought death with it. That is the reason people are dying today. You say that people are dying because of diseases, people are dying because of, of doing drugs, people are dying because of uh, different reasons. No, that's not why they're dying. They're dying because of sin. Because of the disobedience to God. The Bible tells us that we all have an appointment with death. And that sin came into the world. Death came into the world because of sin. The sin of disobedience. This makes all of us sinners. In Romans 3, 10, the Bible says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Verse 23, For all have sinned. That includes you and me. There is not one exception every one of us is separated from god because of sin for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god lazarus here even though uh he was a loved man lazarus was a loved man uh by god the lord jesus christ loved them the bible says here in uh Verse number five, look at this. John 11, five, look at look what the Bible says. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Even though Jesus loved Lazarus, Lazarus still died. He still died, even though Jesus loved them. Okay? But Jesus has power over death. Jesus has power over death. In verse number four, the Bible says, When Jesus heard that he, when Jesus heard that he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of, my, the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Jesus did not come to Lazarus right away. When they sent for him, when he was sick, they sent for Jesus. Jesus didn't come right away. It wasn't that he was trying to be uh, mean in any way to uh, Martha and her sister. He was simply going to do something wonderful. The Bible says in verse number four that, that God was going to receive glory and that people were going to see the Son of Man uh, do a wondrous work that was going to uh, bring him glory so that people could see who Jesus is, that he, that he has power over death. That's the reason he delayed his coming to Lazarus, okay? He had to make sure that Lazarus was dead. He could not arrive any time earlier. Lazarus had to be dead in order for God to receive glory. In order for Jesus to receive glory, Lazarus had to be dead, okay? Jesus was not trying to hurt Mary and Martha in any way. Look at verse number five. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loved them. He did not want to hurt them. Verse 6, 
When he heard, therefore, that he was sick, Lazarus was sick, he abode two days still. So he got the news that he was sick, and he stayed there two more days. For what purpose? To make sure that Lazarus was dead, okay? Because he was going to perform a beautiful miracle that had not been seen before. Two days still, the same place where he was. So he still stayed, he stayed there two more days still, okay? Verse 20, the Bible says, Then Martha, as soon as he heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, and thou hast been here, my brother, had not died. Basically uh, asking and telling the Lord, reclaiming from him, why, why took you so long? Why, why didn't you get here in time? If you would have got here in time, my brother, it didn't have to die. Why are you late? But remember, God did not intend to hurt Martha or Mary. He was simply going to do something wonderful. They just didn't understand that yet, okay? Remember, he told Martha in verse number 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Martha, don't you understand? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yeah, Lord, I believe. Doesn't sound like she believes. Ah, oh, yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Okay? There was some doubt in her still. Jesus was going to do something wonderful once he got to Bethany. Look at verse 11. These things said he, after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. When he said this, the disciples thought, oh, he's thinking that Lazarus is sleeping. Well, if, he, if he's sleeping, he's, he's doing well. Verse 12, then said his disciples, Lord, if he's sleeping, he should do well. But Jesus wasn't talking about sleeping as in rest. Verse 14, then said Jesus unto them, plainly, Lazarus is dead. Okay? Once Lazarus was dead, then Jesus said, okay, it's time to go now that he's dead. Jesus was going to do something wonderful in Bethany that had never been seen. But the disciples did not understand. He was teaching them to trust him. Verse 15, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent that you may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. You see, they still don't get it. Jesus says, I'm glad I wasn't there. I'm glad I was not there. Verse 15, I'm glad for your sakes. For your sakes, I'm glad that I wasn't there. He's dead. This will be wonderful for you that he's dead. They did not understand that. They did not understand what he was about to do. Jesus has the victory over death. My friend, how many times have you been to a funeral service? Is it that sad when you go to a funeral service? Whether it be a believer or an unbeliever, it's a sad situation. But can I tell you something? Jesus has victory over death. Jesus Christ has the power over death. Look at Hebrews uh, chapter 2. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2, in verse 14, Hebrews 2.14, the Bible says, in Hebrews 2.14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus, also himself likewise, took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him, and had the power of death. And that is the devil. You see, Jesus has power over death. He took the power that Satan had. He took that power of death away from Satan. Satan was defeated. When Jesus arose from the dead and came out of that grave, Satan was defeated. He's powerless now. Satan has no power over saved people. Satan has power 
over those who do not know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. My friend, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're in great danger. That means that Satan can take you to hell if you die right now. But when you place your faith in Jesus Christ and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Satan is defeated. He can no longer take you. Jesus has you in his hands and nobody can take you from him. So Jesus Christ is power over death. In John chapter 11, verse 34, the Bible says in verse number 34, and he said, where have you laid him? They took him to where the tomb was and he said, where have you put him? Where is Lazarus buried? Verse 34, and he said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. So they took him over there and then the Bible says that he wept. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. He was saddened. Okay? Jesus weeps for those that die, especially without him. Then said he to the Jews, Behold how he loved him. They said, Oh, look how he loved Lazarus. So, in verse 39, Jesus said, Take, take you away the stone. Take the stone away to cover the, the tomb. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, th by this time he stinketh, for he's been dead four days. He's already been dead four days. And if you have done any study into uh, what exactly takes place at death, you know, the, the, the body begins to go to a decomposition state. Uh, rigor mortis starts setting in when the body becomes stiff. And after 72 hours, it begins to decompose. So this is four days already. It's past 72 hours. It's 96 hours now. So the body is starting to decompose. Martha says, Lord, no, don't, don't take the stone away because he, he's going to stink. He's going to stink, she says. By, by this time, he stinketh, verse 39. John eleven thirty nine. 39, she says, by this time, he stinketh, verse 40. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Don't you believe me, Martha? Martha still had her, had her doubts. It's like Jesus would talk to her. She would receive Jesus' word, but they just wouldn't register. She just couldn't see it. She didn't understand the beautiful miracle he was about to do yet. And so... Verse 41, then they took away the stone, verse 41, from the place where he, where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it. They may believe that thou hast sent me. See, this was the purpose for the beautiful miracle that he was about to do. He was about to raise Lazarus from the grave. And there was people watching all around. Her family, his family was there watching. And this is what the purpose for what he came. Verse 42, 43, and when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And it has been said by many theologians that if you had only said, come forth, that all the graves would have opened up. But he named Lazarus only. Lazarus, come forth. So only Lazarus came forth from the grave. Verse 42 and uh, 43. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with gray clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believe on him. That was the whole purpose for this miracle. So that people could see that Jesus has power over death. That he is able to resurrect people from the dead. This is the power that God has given him. And when all of these people saw Jesus do that, they believed on Jesus. Now, if he had come earlier, before he had died, 
that would have taken place. That's why it was necessary that Lazarus was dead. That's why Jesus waited till he was dead. It was the purpose for this. Verse 46. But some of the men went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. So many believed, in verse number 45, that many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. So as it always the case, many people are going to believe, but many are not going to believe. And that's sad. But praise the Lord for those who do believe. The Bible says that Jesus has all power. Jesus has all power. In the book of Matthew 28, verse 18, he says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus is whole, has all the authority over heaven and earth. In John chapter 5, 21, the Bible says, For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Jesus has the power to resurrect any person he desires to resurrect. Jesus died. In 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 15, the Bible says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how the Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Death could not hold Jesus, because Jesus is God. Death has no power over God. He defeated death, thereby taking away, away the power from Satan. Satan right now is powerless over those who have trusted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Satan has no power. But Satan has power over those who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior. This is why it's so important that if you do not know Jesus Christ, you need to recognize that you're a sinful person. You need to repent of your sins and you need to ask God in Jesus to forgive you of your sins and receive him as your savior. Once you do that, Satan has no power over you. But as long as you delay and reject Jesus Christ, Satan can come at any time and take you. And if you die without being forgiven, he will take you straight to hell for all eternity. You're going to be separated from God for all eternity. Jesus provides eternal life to those who believe in him. This is why God says, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the reason Jesus came from heaven, to pay for the sins of the sinners, because we could not pay for our own sins. He came and died on the cross, tasted death for us, so that we wouldn't have to die. Jesus has already done it all. All we have to do is come to him and ask him to forgive us of our sins and receive him as our savior. And when we do that, we receive eternal life and Satan has no power over us. Jesus promised us this in Romans 10, 9 says, that if thou should confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart, that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is the promise of God, that if you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, and if you believe, it, you believe in your heart, God will give you eternal life. You will be saved, okay? And Satan will have no power over you. Jesus promised in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 14, that if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. This means that if Jesus delays and we die, when Jesus comes, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 14, when he comes and the trumpet sounds and he comes for his church, if you happen to be dead, he's going to, he's going to bring your body out of the grave. And the blinking of an eye is going to transform you and you are going to receive a glorified body. This is the promise of God. Jesus is the victory over death. But my friend, that victory only comes when we repent of our sins, recognizing that we're sinners, recognizing that there's a penalty for sin. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. 
There is a penalty for sin, my friend. Sin is not free. Sin has to be paid for. Jesus already paid for that sin. And all we have to do is come to him in humility and ask him to forgive us of our sins. And we need to receive him as our savior. And when we do that, Satan has no power over us. But if you delay and if you reject Jesus Christ right now, and you die without Jesus in your life, you will immediately go to hell to be tormented and be separated from God forever. So right now, Satan has the power over the lost, but Jesus is the resurrection and the life for those that place their faith in him. My friend, don't delay, Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming back very soon. Don't delay. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you trusted him to forgive you of your sins yet? Will you call on him today? The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Simply, all you have to do, my friend, is humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Go on your knees in humility and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. And say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, Lord. I committed a lot of sins, Lord. I know I'm a sinner. And if I was to die right now, I'd go straight to hell. But Lord, you died for me on the cross to pay for my sins. Lord, would you forgive me? I want to turn from my sins. Would you come into my life and save me, Lord? If you do that right now, the Lord will do that right now. And he can save you this very moment. If you would simply humble yourself. You don't have to be uh, waiting. You don't have to be procrastinating. You can do it right now. Because Jesus is still saving people today. But let me tell you something. The trump is going to sound very soon. And if you have not been saved, it's going to be very difficult then. It's going to be impossible for you to be saved after the trumpet sounds. When Jesus comes back for his church and you still haven't been saved, it will be too late for you. You must do it now. Would you trust him today? This could be the day of a new life for you in Jesus Christ. Would you trust him today? Let's pray. Father God, thank you that Jesus has the power over death. He's defeated Satan. And thank you that because of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and paying our debt, we can be with him forever, Lord, in eternal life when we receive him as our savior, believing that he died on the cross to pay for our sins, believing that he rose again on the third day, and all we have to do is call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, we thank you for that promise you gave us. And we thank you for your precious son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, amen. My friend, don't delay. Come to Jesus soon. Hurry, don't delay. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.